Hello friends, welcome. I am Dr. Harvinder Singh and welcome to Psychiatry Education Forum. So this video will discuss this important clinically relevant question of can Suvorexin help with insomnia? And friends, this discussion is actually a small part from a lecture that I created for our academy, which was, or I should say, which is the pharmacological treatment options for chronic insomnia based on American Academy of Sleep Medicine's recent practice guideline. So I will uh, bring that uh, chapter now. Uh, let me know if you find it clinically relevant. So without wasting any time, let's begin the discussion now. So as we all know how clinically relevant this topic is, most of our patients that we see on a daily basis struggle with insomnia, Due, either due to psychiatric disorders or due to other conditions. And most of us use various medication options for insomnia. But what are the recent practice guidelines recommending? This is what I will discuss today. So I will be talking about the most recently published guidelines by the American Academy of Sleep Medicine in 2018. And please note, this is for adults for chronic insomnia. So without wasting time, let's start with our first medication. And I will start with this novel agent called Suvorexent. Uh, it's only currently indicated per these guidelines for sleep maintenance, not for sleep onset. And the quality of evidence is low. And uh, these guidelines have given classification for quality of evidence also. Um, I will not go into that. We should just focus on sleep onset and sleep maintenance table here. But they, they gave this um, medication low quality of evidence due to risk of publication bias mainly. And uh, one more point here is uh, for the sleep maintenance part, right? So the overall evidence was weakly in favor of this medication's effectiveness for the treatment of sleep maintenance insomnia only. So it, according to them, it was weakly in favor of that. So stay mindful of that. Now, before I go into next medication, I just want to talk a little bit more about various um, sleep topics for each medication. So let me change our slides now. So this is Suvorexin for sleep maintenance with low quality of evidence. And I will talk about these six factors very briefly just to get everything covered for you. Um, now, the this um, results of Suvorexin was based on two important randomized controlled trials. And the medication dosage that they used was 10 milligram, 15 slash 20 milligram, and 20 milligram. Now, this is very important uh, to include the dosage here because many times um, the dosage may be low for some medication. So we should keep th these things in mind as well. So this is the usual dosage for Suvorexin that they used, and it was two randomized controlled trials. Now, Let's start with the sleep latency. So as you can see, for low doses, 10 and 15 slash 20 milligram, there was minimal improvement in sleep latency, but this did not meet the clinical significance. Whereas the 20 milligram did show clinically significant reduction. So this is an important point here indicating that Suvorexin at a higher dose of 20 milligram may improve sleep onset. 
So because right now they are not talking about sleep onset efficacy for suvorexin, but keep the 20 milligram in mind. That may cover both of these um, uh, sleep phases. So this is the effect on sleep latency. So for the total sleep time, similarly improvement was seen, but unfortunately not meeting that clinical significant aspect. Moving on to wake after sleep onset. This was actually clinically significant for both 10 and 20 milligram. And as you can see, that explains why sleep maintenance is an indication for this medication based on this. So, you know, if a person wakes up at middle of night, how quickly they can go back to sleep in terms of having sleep onset, Suvorexin is effective for that. But again, I will repeat, don't ignore the sleep onset part, especially with the 20 milligram dosage for this medication. But how about quality of sleep? They didn't report on this one. Moving on to sleep efficiency. So improvement was seen um, close to clinical significance for sleep efficiency. And the number of awakenings, uh, no statistically significant results were seen. So this is how I will talk about each medication. And this is intentionally, I'm not going into details of these six factors. Uh, I, I, I wanted to do it, but I think it will be too, too long and may not be clinically relevant for everyone. So I will stay with this format moving forward. So this is Suvorexin for sleep maintenance, but don't ignore the 20 milligram for sleep onset. Overall quality of evidence was low. So friends, thanks for watching this video. I hope this was clinically relevant. If you are a medical professional and interested in learning more, please consider joining our Academy membership. This is a closed membership only for medical professionals. Please go to psychiatryeducationforum.com and learn more details of what this membership have to offer. And again, if you have any questions for me, please don't hesitate. Contact me directly at hsing at psychiatryeducationforum.com. So friends, thanks again for listening to me. This is Dr. Harbender Singh signing off now. You all take care and bye for now. Thank you.